I am so thankful for the gift of martial arts that I was given. But do you always get what you pay for? What's up? I'm Ken. This is Kenfu TV, and each week I release videos in the martial arts, philosophy, technique, training, that sort of thing. So that's the kind of thing you're into. I hope that you stick around. I hope that you subscribe and share this with people that you think might get value out of it. But mostly, I just hope that you enjoy it. Don't forget that if you do like this stuff, you like what I'm doing here, and you want to have access to more of it, you can become a member of this channel. There's a link down below to join, and you'll get access to a bunch of other content that I have strictly for members. Today, we're going to talk about the cost of martial arts, the cost of your training. And we're also going to talk about the price of training and how those aren't the same thing. When it comes to the martial arts, most of us pay to train. And I find that that is often misunderstood. We all pay. We all pay for our training. 100%. But in fact, I think that we pay twice. Or some of us do. The first thing to think about is just the cost of membership, the cost of the dues, the monthly fee that you pay to be a part of a school, to be part of a dojo, and to receive your training. To really get into this, first we have to define what exactly that is, what that fee includes, and what it doesn't. If you train at a place, if you train in a school, in a, in a facility, in, in a building with mats and equipment and everything else, that's what your fee is for. Paying the rent and the utilities and the equipment cost and maintenance and now these days more than ever the cost of cleaning supplies and everything else these are what i tend to lump together as just operational costs every school has them if you have a dedicated place that you get together and train and you have equipment and you have all of this stuff then you have these operational costs and this this is the majority of what your fees go towards while unfortunate it is not uncommon in the martial arts for an instructor to not actually receive payment for teaching, that the money has to go to other things, more important things, to be able to even do the things that we're doing. But most people these days don't want to see the value in a lot of stuff when it comes to their money, and so the idea of raising prices enough to where people could actually get paid appropriately for what they do is not a thing that happens very often. So a lot of instructors just teach because they love to teach. For transparency, I am in that boat. I don't get paid to teach. I've never gotten paid to teach. My instructor never got paid to teach. Any money collected went towards getting new equipment or, or making sure that we had what we needed to, to be able to do what we do, to be able to cover the cost of the rent and all this stuff. That's what the money went towards. But that is not to say that instructors don't get paid. Now that might sound like a bit of an oxymoron. How, how can you be paid but not be paid? And the truth is, is because it was not money that the instructor is getting paid in. Instead, it is time and attention, respect and effort that pay the cost of the instructor. I consider the martial arts that I received a gift, something that was given to me, something that, uh, sure, I put in time and effort and, and perhaps earned what I received. But that was with this back and forth that went between me and my instructor to be able to have that. I already mentioned that the money that I paid didn't go to him, so that was never a part of the equation. And it's important to realize that it was never part of the equation because then the other things that happen are, are important. They're more important. They're worth paying attention to. For you teachers, it's also important to realize that among your students, there are people who take. People who don't give back to you. And we all know it's a labor of love and there's energy put into what you do. That every day you show up and you train and you share knowledge and you work hard to be able to create opportunities for people. There will be people who, who feed back. But for every, every person in the group that is like that, there are other people in the group who don't. Who show up looking for what they'll get today. For what, for what you'll give them and, and looking for more. Always more. What do I get next? I showed up again. I paid my dues again. What do I get now? I've been training for a while. I've worked really hard. What else do I get for this money that I'm paying for this time that I'm paying for? What do I get for that? And do I get more than what I've had yesterday? Is there more? The truth is the martial arts isn't about more. The martial arts is one of these really interesting things where you, hmm, you get what you give 
and that's not to be confused with the payment of the instructor, but it's you, you, you pay for the opportunity to train yourself. That your skill, your ability, and everything that you learn comes from your hard work. And it's not unlike a gym. In fact, a lot of martial arts schools call their training space a gym because of the fact that a gym, when you get a gym membership, you don't get a gym membership and then people give you muscles and they give you agility and they give you flexibility or strength. That's not, that's not what you do. You pay for a membership to go have access to the ability to earn those things for yourself, to develop them in yourself. A dojo is exactly like this. You pay your dues to have the ability to show up, the ability to have a place to go, the ability to meet up with like-minded people and to study under someone you want to study under. And that training is for you and you have to put the energy into it. And sometimes it's going to be boring and sometimes it's going to feel like you're not getting anything new. And sometimes it's going to feel like, like you're being neglected. But the truth is, if you ever feel neglect, then you should recognize that the neglect that you feel is the neglect of you to yourself. If you're not putting the energy into yourself, then you'll never receive. You will never get these things. Even if they're given to you, you'll never get them. And that's an important distinction, an important thing to understand. That just showing up every day is not it. There are people on the mat that when they come in, they come in a couple times a week. They show up, they get on the mat. They do whatever it is they're doing that day, they leave and they, that's it. They'll come back Tuesday and they'll do it again and they'll get out of it, whatever they're going to get out of it. But they're not putting the time in for themselves. They're not putting the energy into it outside of that. They're not taking that and making it their own. You And you can tell that. You can see the people that when they go home, that, that the training stops. They come back and they're exactly where you left them or maybe a little less because they didn't keep that going. And so it just continues to just barely be enough. These people are often the people who are the most frustrated with how, how little they gain over a period of time and, and how sometimes they feel like the people around them are gaining more or being given more because of the fact that they're doing better. It's not it. The truth is it's the fact that they're putting in the effort, putting in the energy that between classes they're working, they're taking what they're given and they're, and they're spending it wisely. I mention this for teachers because it is draining. It is a draining thing. It is something that will will subtract. I, I consider these subtractive relationships, ones that you come in and, and it is a cost to you as an instructor to go in and to give and to give and have people take and take and not necessarily end up with anything back for it other than the continued feeling that that wasn't enough and you need to give more. I'm here to tell you that's not it. If you're an instructor who's feeling this, First off, recognize that it's real and it's okay that it's real. And second, realize that, that you are enough and the things that you're giving is appropriate. If you're deciding what needs to be given to somebody and you're giving them that thing, not everybody's going to understand what they need versus what they expect. The people who take are also the people who compare, who look at the people around them and they, they make what other people have the thing that they're paying attention to. That they lose sight of their own integrity, their own drive, their own discipline. And then they compare what they feel like they should be getting, the time they should be getting, the attention they should be getting. Everything that they feel is based on the fact that they feel the person next to them paid the same amount of money and that is what they get. That why am I not getting what they're getting? And very, very rarely are people thinking the other way. If they are getting something, very rarely are they going, well, why aren't these people what getting what I'm getting? This is a function of, of the transaction. This idea, this comparison is part of that transaction. People who are looking at what did this equal that get for me today? It will drain you. It will drain you to watch it. It will drain you to deal with it. And if they are vocal about it, it will drain you to hear about it and to talk about it and to, to not have an easy way to explain that that has nothing to do with what they're getting here. More than anything else, an instructor, an instructor's job in the martial arts is to grow a person, to grow their character, to grow their strength, to grow their speed, to grow their agility, their skill, to grow them. But you're only one part of the process. Like, like the farmer watering the fields, there's, there's an entire giant sun out there that plays an important role in how things happen after that. You only play one piece. We are farmers as instructors plant the seed, we water it when we can, but there's an entire ecosystem of things that need to take place that, that build this person that is not the farmer. 
don't feel discouraged either. This, this feeling, the subtractive feeling, this what I refer to as a transactional relationship where I gave you money and I showed up, what do I get? This relationship, transactional, is exhausting. And it pulls from you, it steals from you, and it leaves you without energy. But don't be discouraged. Not everybody is this way. And there will be people who, when you see them on the mat, they are additive. They bring to you. They, they recharge that. They recharge the people around them. That, and that's the thing that makes them additive, is they appreciate what they're getting. They put the work in. They understand the value of it and the fact that it doesn't just stop with what they were given, but how they take it and how they use it and how they share it with others. And that, that is the thing that gives the energy back. That's why we do it. That's why I do it. To share what I was given and to watch people grow, to care about them. In some cases, to love people so much that you're willing to do things that make them uncomfortable, that make you uncomfortable. When you're willing to put someone places that they've got to fight, they've got to work, they want to give up, but they can't because you won't let them. Because in order for them to grow, they need that adversity. I tell students that when you care about that other person, you can't be violent, you can't be abusive. These are not good traits. But when you care about the person that you're working with and you want them to be protected and to be safe, they're learning the martial arts. Martial arts are for this purpose. Explicitly not hitting them or holding back. Uh, these things are, are not helping them grow. I often consider the fact that I, I, I love my students so much that I will actually try to hit them and try to move. And I say try because if I gave them the appropriate skills, then they will move, they will learn, they will understand that it's up to them to do what comes next. If I hold back and make sure that they never are in danger, then they will never learn to deal with danger. This is the love that we bring. The ability and the want to care so much that sometimes it hurts us to try and to watch as someone struggles and fails and has difficulty moving on and creating situations that are hard or creating situations that are boring because they need to continue to grow and that next step is on them to do and you can't do it for them and so you watch as they struggle and get frustrated and discouraged and you and you feed them and allow them to continue but you don't give them what they think they need you don't give them what it is that they feel like they're missing because you can't you can't do it you have to allow them to do it this is the love that we bring to the mat this is the passion and the care that we have for the knowledge that we have and the people that we care about and and the worth of what we do this is what i call the transformational relationship earlier i talked about the transactional relationship i paid my dues i showed up what are you going to give me did I leave with enough for what I felt like I paid? Versus the transformational relationships where people show up, the dues were just the, the cost to entry, the cost to participate, and they put the time in, they accept and appreciate what they're given regardless of what it is, and they put the effort and they try to continue what they have. They try to take what they have and continue to move it in themselves so that the next time they can get more because they've done everything to remove the barriers between them and getting more. They do what they can to share with the other people on the mat, to help lift the people around them, to set the best examples, and to show what appreciation looks like. These are the transformational relationships, and I call them transformational, not because the person is transforming, they are, but they're transforming you as the instructor. These are the people that when they get on the mat, when they show up that night, that's the thing that helps bring that energy back to you and keeps you wanting to drive forward and doing what you do. This is the payment you receive. Not everyone will understand these values and the value of what is paid to an instructor who's trying to share, who's trying to build a person. In fact, many won't. Those that take are many, and those that, that give back and those that embrace are fewer. And the reality is sometimes you might have to take a break, that that energy will drain you. And when teachers burn out, a lot of time it's because they give and give and give and give, and people take and take and take, and it just stays with that. 
and they go home every night exhausted and they show up again to do it again and they go more exhausted every time and they burn out and they lose their passion their fire is extinguished and their want to continue is waning this is a difficult thing very often it's when you see teachers quit teaching or they cut back the hours they teach or they any number of things and it's because they're exhausted it's because the value of the do's versus the value of what they do were never understood in my opinion there's no amount of money that will ever make a martial arts instructor feel valued money isn't value for a martial arts instructor very often money is the cost of doing business it's operational expenses and it is the thing that continues to make it possible to do what they do. It is not the thing that they do. It is not the thing that they get paid for. It's the thing that makes it possible to do what they do. So when I show up every day and I get on the mat and I have a mat to get onto and I have a building to go into, I'm thankful that we have students who pay their dues, who help make that possible. But it doesn't, it doesn't pay me. It's not the payment that I receive. What is given from a student to a teacher, that relationship, the thing that makes the word sensei so valuable is something that money can't buy. This relationship, this connection between two people, this thing that allows people to grow and, and chase what they're passionate about, to be confident in themselves and to, and to embrace the world for what it is and get what they want out of it and to learn the skills and to take them and to use them well, this this is what it's worth. This is why it's important. This is the gift.